My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Hearthstone Arena. The screen is still going to be completely devoid of my face, unfortunately. I have ordered my replacement, but it still hasn't shipped in. Okay, we have three options here. We have Hunter, Mage, and Druid. I've played a Mage relatively recently, a Hunter like two episodes ago. So it's Druid time. Uh, easy Keeper of the Grove. It's The stats aren't that good, but having an effect where I can silence a minion or deal two damage and basically remove a three drop or a two drop, so good. Uh, Claw is relatively good early removal. I don't want to take an Earthen Ring fast here unless I'm guaranteed not to get better twos. Sorry, threes. Healing Touch is just ineffective. Healing Touch is really, really good in a ramp deck where you need to stabilize in the late game and you know you've got big threats that will stop them from hitting your face and you just need to prevent lethal. But it's not good in Arena because you don't want to heal in Arena. It's a whole card that you're spending healing. You need to develop minions and then control the board, right? Sometimes if you're running like a super heavy weapons deck, you might want to draft some heals. But even then, you want to draft like Earthen Ring Farseer and... Antique heal bot. You want to draw things that actually develop body on the field whilst they heal you. So, Micro Machine. Uh, Druid of the Flame. I really like the Druid of the Flame. Transform into an Ice Rager or a 2 5 minion. It's really good. I actually. I think Ice Rager is going to be pretty good on Arena. So, actually, here's where I should probably say something for anyone who's interested. Uh, a while ago, I was asked by someone in the comments of one of these episodes whether or not I was going to do a perspective, like an arena perspective on all of the new release cards for T uh, TGT. And I still really do want to do that, but I feel like I need the web camera to do that, so I'm waiting on shipping. It's a real big hassle at the moment, but I do want to do that because I do have a lot to say about some of the new cards, which might come up somewhat in this episode, because they were released this morning. Obviously, Spider Tank is just amazing. I don't want to take another Micro Machine, because a Micro Machine can't be played if you're going first. So think if you're going first. You've got turn one, you don't develop anything on turn one, usually. Your opponent coins a two, right? They coin a two, and then you play a Micro Machine, it goes back to them, and that Micro Machine is now a two-two. It's horrible. If they have a 2-3 on board, they kill your Micro Machine for free and still have a 2-1. It's really bad in that situation. You need the Micro Machine to hit the board first so that you develop it, it goes to their turn and it's a 2-3, sorry, a 2-2. Two, two. And then it comes back to your turn and it's a 3-2 so you can deal with something or pass it back to them and then suddenly it gets out of control. But Naturalize is really, really, really bad. Destroy a minion, give your opponent two cards. Uh, unless the other cards were absolutely horrible, I'm not going to take that. And No Regard Infantry, doing one damage for three mana and then just having like a relatively insignificant body on the field isn't worth it. Okay, Stranglethorn Tiger or Guildman Stalker? This is actually an interesting decision. So there's a lot of things to be said for Beast Synergy. I mean, we already have a Druid of the Flame, we have possibly a Stranglethorn Tiger here. And that's two beast cards for Druid, which does have small beast synergy right now in Druid of the Fang, but which is going to have a lot more beast synergy after TGT comes out. Gildan Stalker is a pretty good opener. It means if your opponent is trying to respond to you, like if that's their plan, as their two drop to respond to yours by like frost bolting it or holy smiting it or whatever. If that's their plan, they're not going to be able to do it, obviously. It keeps itself in stealth. Ugh. Although, I really like the Stranglethorn Tiger for the fact that it's really good against Flame Strike, so I'll take that for that reason specifically. Pilot of Shredder is the best 4-drop in the game, although I actually like both of the other cards as well. Starfire is amazing. Deal 5 damage, draw a card. Draw a card. It's like cycling itself, but it also does 5 damage. Uh, I like Druid of the Flame as well, but with two strong three drops already and no Starfires in my deck, I have to go for the Starfire. So I can tech in a Kazan, or I can take an Injured Blade Master, which is basically Kazan stats for one less mana. Or I could take a Ravenholt Assassin. I think the Ravenholt Assassin is the worst in this set. The reason Kazan Mystic isn't that bad is because Mage and Paladin are the two most powerful classes in Arena. By most people's estimation. I, I don't want to get into a discussion about actually who is the most powerful, because I think it depends a lot on your drafting and your playstyle as to what 
class is most powerful for you. For example, Warlock is apparently really good in Arena. I suck at Warlock in Arena. I'm really, really bad at it. So, Kazan can steal secrets from both Paladins and Mages, which is kind of cool. Both of my 4-drops are relatively good so far, so I think I can take a lackluster 4-drop. I don't think I want to take a lackluster 3-drop when I can get so many more Druid of the Flames and stuff like that. Ironbark Protector for the late game. Big old 8-8. Eight eight. Harvest Golem, one of the best 3-drops in the game. Haunted Creeper, one of the best 2-drops in the game. Okay, now we actually have a fair amount of beasts. We have a Haunted Creeper, we have a Druid of the Flame. We have... Stranglethorn Tiger. That's actually not that many beasts. I don't know if I can take a Druid of the Fang over an Ironbark Protector. If I had more 4 mana beasts, if, like, for some reason, I had a 5-4 beast, 4 mana, fuck, what's it called? It, it's a neutral card? I'll never remember it. But if I had that, if I had some more 4 mana beasts, then I would totally take the Druid of the Fang. Unfortunately, I don't, so it's going to be an Ironbark Protector. None of those are particularly impressive, so I'll take another Claw for early game removal. Swipe. It's always swipe when you see a swipe. Interesting. We have a lot of low damage minions. We've got, like, Haunted Creeper and the 1-1 Spectral Spiders from it. We've got the Harvest Golem. We've got Keeper of the Grove. We've got all of these minions that do a relatively low amount of damage by themselves that if I buffed them with an Abusive Sergeant would actually be incredible. But at the same time, I feel like I really want a Loot Hoarder. <laughs> Damn it. Still working on the solution for that kill switch. Gosh. I used to have all of this stuff sorted out. I'd have a webcam, I'd have my score on screen, I'd have a kill switch for my microphone. But I don't have any of those things anymore. Damn it. So many things breaking and changing technologies. Uh, loot Hoarder for the card draw, I think I still want to take. I do need some 3 twos though, because this is a 1 2. This is a 2 2 if I played in the wrong situation. I don't want to be in a situation where I need a 3-2 to kill my opponent, say, 3-drop or 2-drop, and I don't have it. Uh, another Druid of the Flame. I like Innovate, but I don't have a heavy enough deck, right? I've got, like, 1-5, a 6, and 2 eights. I'm almost 60 weight, probably about 60% of the way through draft. And I have 4 late game cards, so I don't need an Innovate right now. Uh, Wolf Rider basically is expensive removal just because the other ones are oh, not good. No Experimenter. I've got two claws and I've got a swipe. Is that it? Two claws, a swipe, and a starfire. So that's four out of 19 cards. That can be taken as about 20% of the time I'll be hitting a spell. The other time I'll be transforming into a minion. A chicken, sorry. No, I don't think that's good enough. I think I have three damage minions, like especially the Druid of the Flame. If I want to play it as a 5-2, I can then protect it with an Arcane Nullifier the turn after. That's not that bad, actually. I'll take an Arcane Nullifier. Cult Master for the card draw. Especially really good since the other ones are absolutely horrible. Druid of the Claw. Amazing card. Really good card. I have to take a Blood Sail Raider here. I'm not particularly happy about it. Because it's another 2-3 and not a 3-2. But it's the best of those. Pilot of Shredder. How many early game plays do I have? I've got two claws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's gonna be Gilman Stalker, obviously. But still. Oh god, now it has to be River Crocolisk. I have too many early game cards. Actually, I can capitalize upon that if I go for a Frost Wolf and try and... That actually might work, because I've got a lot of minions that will stick on the board, like... Piloted Shredder, for example. Uh, I don't have any adjacency buffs. No, I don't, so I've got to take the Injured Blade Master. It's the only one that actually has any effect on board. That's the Lost Soul Strider. That's the 5-4 that I was talking about that's a beast. Starfire is a late game card. Okay. This is, this is difficult. Ysera, if you ever play it, will win you the game. Hogger, if you play it in correct situation, will lock your opponent out of the game. Like, this is actually really difficult. Because Hogger can be 
better than you, Sarah, in Arena. Because your opponent is far less likely to have direct damage. They're far less likely to have direct removal. They're far less likely to have a silence. And getting to turn nine is... Uh, no, I have to take you, Sarah. I, I can't. It's, it's too difficult to get Hogger to work. You need, first off, to make sure your opponent doesn't have any four damage removal spells. Then you need to make sure that their board is thin enough that they can only take care of the Knoll each turn. Then you need to capitalize upon that with your own removal spells to prevent them from flooding the board so they can't end up killing the Hogger, regardless of how much value they trade into it. It's so much that you have to do. I feel like Ysera is going to be a lot better. So we have a really strong early game and then we have a really strong late game. Our really strong late game is kind of condensed into these five cards here, but we also have a Stranglethorn Tiger, which is pretty good. I like the Stranglethorn Tiger, as I mentioned while I was doing the drafts, because it survives to Flame Strike and can't get pinged, so it survives to the Flame Strike 9 mana as well. Drew to the Flame. This is, this is pretty good. We'll mostly be let down by the fact that our early game is kind of shitty. And it's kind of shitty because while I was mentioning this in the draft, we've got a lot of 2-3s, 1-2... 2-1, this is going to be a 2-2 two -two if we play it in the wrong situation. We're going to have a lot of things that can't trade up severely. 3-2s is still better than 2-3s. Mostly because 3-2s can trade up into a 3-drop, whereas a 2-3 almost never does that. Whew. Okay. Okay, this is going to be good. So, I've been... Uh, Drinking all weekend. This is the first episode of anything I've recorded in, I want to say, like, four or five days. So I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, right? Trying to get back into the flow. You thought that sentence was going to continue, didn't you? No. Hmm. I will fight with honor. I must protect the wild. I have no two drops that I think I can mulligan two cards and top deck one. <laughs> Why? Okay, I need to get my claw as a response to something. Oh, I might have to coin the spider tank as my two drop and then wolf rider to remove something. Reporting for duty. I mean, like, this has the most health out of almost anything I would be playing right now that isn't, you know, Death Lord. Ooh. Bathe in flames. Actually, this should be fine. Threatens the 2 1. It plus the damage from the Wolf Rider would defeat anything. Reporting for two Shit, dude. They're taking it real slow. I might want to start removing these, like, real quickly, just in case my opponent plays a... Uh, shit. 2-5, five, 5 mana, Quartermaster. Gives all of the Silverhand recruits two arms. Nice. Nice, I can kill that and survive. I can still kill it and survive. But I put myself in Consecration range. So the reason I would be putting myself in Consecration range would be... I claw, and I use the Spider Tank in order to remove the Sengen. Why would I do that? No, it's Claw Wolf Rider. So it's expensive removal on the Sengen, but it stops the Sengen from being able to protect anything else. And it means that I can have this as a 3-3, and this is a 2-3. So they're not... Neither of them is vulnerable to Consecration right now. Obviously, you'd have to hit and then Consecrate only to kill one of them. But also, I've expended the health of this a little bit. So it's less of a tragedy if my opponent plays a true Super Champion and then kills this. Oh, that's kind of annoying. I'm just going to try and stall them, because if I get to Starfire that, I get incredible value. I don't need to proactively trade into that. 
That's pretty bad, but it's still not horrible. If my opponent doesn't attack with this Lodge Belcher, I'll be real happy. I'm real happy. Two, one, one. Oh shit, this will go down to Consecration range. If I attack with this. Okay, fine. So instead I'll put this one in Consecration range and stop my opponent from being able to on board put the Druid of the Claw in Consecration range. I obviously don't want to kill this until I've got my Kazan so I can steal whatever it summons. Well, that's kind of bad. That's like really bad actually. Ooh, that's rough. Wait, why are you going face? What a wild dude. Are you going face because you think you can, like, burst me down? If you do think you can burst me down, you might have forgotten that you just played a zombie chow. You've given me a heal on board. Oh, that's, that's not good at all. Oh, gosh. Hero power strangle form. If this doesn't summon anything, you're the dumbest dude. Dumbest dude of all time. Okay. God, I'm a dumb man. Why didn't I just play fucking Iron Block? I knew it was going to be Avenge as well. That's the problem. It's really rough. I can't even remove it with spells. I can't even remove it with what I have on board. So I may as well try and keep this alive for the moment because my Frost with Warlord will get an extra buff off it. My opponent's unlikely to trade seven damage from my face just in order to kill this. Especially when, when they wouldn't trade a 2-2 two -two for a 2-2. Two -two. Reporting for duty. So I can remove a lot of things. I can remove almost, e actually, actually almost everything. Cool. I start with the Starfire here. Okay, we should be over the worst of it, unless our opponent does something like fucking double blessing of kings. Or, oh god, what's that card? That's a blessing of kings. That's not good. What's that card in hand? It has to be a removal spell of some sort, otherwise you wouldn't be holding it. If it's Big Game Hunter, I'm going to cry. I just want you to know this. It's time for the Parade of the Big Dudes. There's the second Blessing of Kings that I was talking about. So if I kill that, I'll go down to one health, by the way. I still think it's correct, though. So if that's Consecrate or Hammer of Wrath, I'd lose. If that's any amount of face damage, I'll lose. What is it that they would be keeping in hand to this point? That's the question I have to ask myself. What to do? Can I throw away an Ironbark Protector? You know what? I think I actually have to. This Ironbark Protector is practically just going to say, heal your face for nine. I would have one health after killing that Silver Hand Recruit. I told you that Double Blessing of Kings would be fucking bad, and it happened. Oh, I hate it when I'm right. So now I don't have any more taunts. 
I need all of my opponent's cards to be responses to things that they won't be able to respond to. Which actually, it looks like it is. I also gen uh, need to generate a wider board than a tall board. It doesn't matter if I get Ysera out right now. Ysera is not a bad thing for my opponent. I need to hero power every turn unless I have something already on board. That's probably going to get Keeper of the Grove plus an attack from the healthy one. That's going to be a 1-1 beater. I'm fine with humility. Okay, uh, that is lethal with my hero power. Was the humility the left? No, it was consecration. If I if I removed the minion, I would have died. If I removed the minion with my hero power, I would have died. Oh fuck! Reporting for duty. Come on! You're kidding me, right? Ugh. I dreamed a dream of times gone by. I'm really bad at that song. Don't. <laughs> I actually really am. Oh, that's not good. If my opponent gets any buff, they win. Because I don't have any taunts left in my deck. I wonder if it was correct to play around the possible three damage buff. Because think about it like this. If my opponent draws Blessing of Might or, uh, or Hammer of Wrath, then I might have thrown the game away by using my hero power to remove the 1-1 instead of just attacking it with Ysera. Well played. Blessing of Might, yep. I have no words for how incredibly lucky this person is. It's indescribable. Oh, worst case scenario right now is they have uh, they have double blessing of kings on that. Double blessing of kings on that. Okay, well, I'm going to play around the possible oh, consecration that they might have in hand, because obviously they have removal in hand, otherwise they would have played it. They play the consecration. Well... All we need is for them not to get a stealth minion. Stealth minion. I wonder if it would have been correct to play around the possible three damage buff. They have the three damage buff. It's crazy. Ugh. I'm, you know, I'm just glad that I knew that I made the mistake before the mistake came up. I will fight with honor. It makes me feel a lot better on the inside because it means that in the future, I will know the correct play in that situation. Like, I will out and out 100% know what I should have done. And the only way that you get better at this game is by sucking at this game for a very long time. And I can tell you that much because I've sucked at this game for a very long time. Gosh, I hope my opponent's playing Secrets. So absurd. That first... Ugh. I'm not even gonna... Yeah. So sad. Oh, hey! This is a perfect counter, that. Oh, shit. If my opponent musters for battle, I'm really annoyed. That would explain why they would be really happy about playing a shielded minibot. Because they're going to have the damage to remove the Gilgan Stalker anyway. Oh, no, they just have another shielded minibot, apparently. So that's cool. So I can claw hero power in order to remove the mech warper, which I kind of want to do because I don't want my opponent to play a 4 mana mech for 3 mana and then just another 2 mana mech or something. All of the cards I've seen them play are mech so far, so as far as I'm concerned, 100% of their deck is mech. There's no way I can develop a minion this board, uh, this turn if I want to kill the Mech Warper. 
So basically, Claw Hero Power, or just Hero Power Gilban Stalker. Do I value the Gilban Stalker trading into my opponent's Divine Shield? Kind of, because my opponent could easily just Blessing of Kings next turn, and if they Blessing of Kings, I've got a 6-6 six, six with Divine Shield, and I just lose. Time waits for no one. This is actually a really difficult turn. Um, I think I have to spend the Claw. There's no reason to attack into that. So worst case scenario is they Blessing of Kings it and they have a 6-6 six, six out. Well, now they're going to kill the 2-1, obviously. Reporting for duty. Arcane Nullifier is only just worse than the Keeper of the Grove right now. And that's because the Arcane Nullifier dies to the 2-2 two, two, and the 3-2. But since this automatically kills the 2-2, it stands up against my opponent's board, which is nice. Is there any way I can get away without using Swipe this turn? Probably not. Let's probably Swipe Claw to remove this and then attack that. Yeah. For the wild. <laughs> I'm kind of annoyed that I had to rope on, like, turn three. <laughs> like, hmm, this is an incredibly difficult decision. I'm feeling like life coach right now. I don't like roping. Also, this makes the possible... Uh, what's it called? Oh, God, I don't have a silence for that. Reporting for duty. Nature's wrath. Magic detected. This makes the possible... Uh, the 3-5 the that eats a minion, Stampede and Kodo, makes it a little bit worse. Because I've already gotten some value out of my Keeper of the Grove, killing two minions. Oh, that's... Like, the worst. Oh. You have to be kidding me. How do you have the best card every time? What is... Uh, oh. It's the only thing that could stop me from killing that. Like... Okay, it's strictly correct to do Wolf Rider Hero Power and attack the Stormwind Champion first. It's strictly correct to do that. But the thing is, you get punished for it so little of the time that I wasn't even considering it. I am the least lucky man of all time right now. This is incredible. And of course I've got this Kazan Mystic that I'm basically r relying on having hit. That gets to kill my entire board. Hmm. So I pretty much need this to hit a secret so I can kind of swing it, right? Take one of their cards, play a card for myself, pretty much. Is this going to be an 0-3 Druid draft? Silvermoon shall not fall. Uh huh. I can't play an Iron Bark Protector into that. So currently my board presents basically the death of that as long as I hero power kill it after these two. Assuming the 7-7 seven, seven kills my 2-2. Two, two. Unless it doesn't, in which case I can just use my board. Consecration to kill the 2-2. Two, two, which has the unfortunate effect of preventing my ability to do that.
I have to just. I so I can trade my four one there, in which case, they can't kill this. You know what? I'm gonna trade a four one into a one one. That's how desperate I am. It'll prevent my opponent from possibly from board at least being able to kill my eight eight, and it means consecration won't destroy me. Right. Consecration removing my 8-8, eight, eight, only costing their 7-7 seven, seven in the Consecration, then the 1-1's one, one still on the field. Okay. That's not that bad so far. They don't have Guaranteed Lethal. This is incredible. I don't... I don't know if I've ever been Shrek this hard. Just watch as this guy misses and kills my cult master. Or Consecration, of course. Which would be hilarious. Consecration is definite lethal. Consecration, you run the 7-7 seven, seven into the 8-6, and then you just run for face for 9. Of course, I'll already have two dealt to me by that point. Mm-hmm, Kerbal Geomancer. Reporting for duty. Please hit the 2-1. Just miss and hit the 2-1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had to be. So that's that's zero and two so far. The thing is, I don't feel like I'm making enough mistakes to be this low. I don't think I've made that many mistakes in my draft. I don't think I've made that many mistakes in my play. The one mistake that I can look at and go out... Well, two, actually. First off, killing the piloted shredder before I killed the 6-6. Six -six, that was entirely wrong. My fault. Uh, only considering Blessing of Might and Hammer of Wrath possible top deck after... I used my face to kill the 1-1. One, one. That's a match that I easily could have won if I just thought about that. Versus Valera. But still, those are relatively minor mistakes. I must protect the wild. Oh, God. If this goes 0-3, I'm going to be devastated. And it looks like it easily could because this is a rogue. Right. They have the ability to basically dominate the early game by backstabbing you. I'm not even getting my two drops. That's cool. They have the ability to dominate the early game by backstabbing, by using deadly poison, by using fucking gadget auto barber. Goblin auto barber, sorry. Thank you. I am so grateful. I am so grateful to get that kill then. It's impossible for a rogue to remove. <laughs> Unless they play a mad bomber and hit it three times. Okay. So I can force them to hero power next turn if I attacked and hero powered. But then I have a 2 1 on the field, they hero power, they kill it. Okay. I feel like I actually need to run the Wolf Rider as removal to that. It's not like I have a different three drop in hand. And of course, I can't just develop the Wolf Rider because then my opponent's hero power just kills the Wolf Rider. So yeah, that's a pretty sufficient trade down for me. I'm not too happy about it, but I knew that's the territory I was buying into when I put, uh, picked the Wolf Rider. Although there weren't that many better picks, so... So I can kill both forms of it and force my opponent to hero power next turn. I don't want to play cult. I've got, I've got the worst hand right now. Like, it's really bad. I'm crying on the inside. You can't tell. But there are tears dropping from my heart down into my... What's below the heart? I don't know. I'm not a fucking botanist. I'm well aware that a botanist is not 
<laughs> Deal with human anatomy. So, many so if they have to hero power this turn in order to kill this, they will slow down a little bit, which I'll be glad about, but unfortunately I can't you know, capitalize upon ah, that that much. This guy's toast. Oh my fucking god, am I get am I gonna get beaten by someone who actually doesn't know what the combo mechanic is? This is not my day. That's actually really good for me. Firecat is far too vulnerable to backstab. I can't, I can't do that to myself right now. Oh god. They didn't know how to use the combo. <laughs> and they still have a pile of shredder in because why wouldn't they? Who doesn't have a pile of shredder in their deck these days? I don't want to remove that right now. Removing that would make it so that I can only play the Cult Master and if I develop the Cult Master this turn <laughs> I just base that's that's kind of me waving the white flag right there that's like yeah fuck it I don't want to win at all My shield for Argus. of course every time I play a 2-5 my opponent has the buff to make the 5-4 which is a perfect kill Beautiful. I'm just really pleased. That ordering. It's incredible. They could have coined this first and then buffed this to a 2-5 uh, as well. But no. Oh, it's possible they didn't want it to die to the Stranglethorn Tiger, killing it for free. But I would guess they didn't do it because they didn't know how considering the combo play earlier. I'll show them all. So you might think there's no difference between killing one of the two twos and the other two two, but the other two two could possibly be bounced and used to give the battle cry again, whereas this is never going to give them the secret, so it's just constantly going to be a 2-2. If my opponent goes face, I'm going to be... Oh, I'm not even happy about that, because I don't get that many hits off the Cult Master. It's probably just going to be Hero Power, Frostle. And I'll probably go face, rather than removing the 4-4 with my 5. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Maybe if I still had another minion, it would be correct, but now it's just wrong. Just go face. I need to start the parade of big dudes as soon as I can. So that my opponent can somehow get double Blessing of Kings and win. I don't know how they're going to get a Blessing of Kings in their rogue deck, but... If it would ever happen, it's going to happen to me. And now. Because apparently this is just... Not my day. We must cleanse the sun well. Cold blood? Or this? Cold blood. A this. What? Blade flurry? Attack, Blade Flurry, attack. Left with a 2-1. If you can't kill it this turn, attacking it makes no sense. What? They just replaced a 2-1 weapon with him. <laughs> I, I can't even feel good about that victory. I said well played out of, just out of inertia. It's what I usually do, out of habit. Cursed Sword, I hope you get an amazing pack for having to watch this bullshit.
Dear God, I'm bad. Like, this isn't even... It, it, it's actually incredible how punished I'm getting. You asked uh, for it. I must protect you. The Ysera play was outright incorrect. I should have I should have attacked it with Ysera. Uh I'm gonna be on the drop first unless my opponent plays E. I, I'll I'll be really happy in all cases except for my opponent playing specifically a zombie chow on turn one. Every other case, I am completely fine. Okay. I'm done. Why did I mulligan my other two? I'm I'm on tilt. I'm actually on tilt right now, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly. Why did I mulligan my two when that would be my follow-up to a coin two? Oh. And now I can't. I can't even say, oh, I just thought I was going to claw. Okay. So if my opponent has to run this attack here and then a ping, we're going to be pretty happy. If they try and go for this attack here and then, like, frosts... Actually, that's not that bad. If they had a frost bolt, they would have 100% done that. So from that play, we can tell they do not have a frost bolt. They also probably don't, or almost certainly, actually, don't have a... Oh, cool. Claw here under. They almost all actually they definitely don't have a flame cannon either. Otherwise, you remove the 2-1 and then you flame cannon to remove the other one. You leave yourself with the 2-1 on board. Or maybe they just wanted to develop a different minion. Huh. Possible. Arcane missiles, all of them hit my face. Here we go. Why? Do you realize that you're going to give me value for my loot? Well, you probably actually don't realize that. It's the sad thing. I, must safeguard I do need to shut this down. If my opponent just scores into other spells, I'll be pretty sad about it. Even though I really want to get the pilot to shredder out that turn so I can challenge my opponent's five drop in some way. I really need to shut down the mana worm before it gets crazy. Oh, cool. I couldn't challenge that five drop anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's not a five drop either, so good work there, right? I wouldn't be too surprised to see that kill the Keeper of the Grove this turn. If my opponent then populates wide following that, I can possibly swipe this turn, which would be interesting. That's not that good for me. I can remove them both. And develop a Gilman Stalker. It's not that bad. So that would be 5-5 five, five goes into the 6-6, six, six, and then I swipe the 5-4. Play a Gilban Stalker. Or I could fish for more. My opponent's going to have Flame Strike, not next turn. Well, yes, next turn, actually. Ooh, they're going to have Flame Strike next turn. So I do want to kind of thin out my board a little bit. I was wondering whether or not I possibly just play, like, Pilot to Shredder, which they're not going to want to attack, and something in Stealth. And then get myself a lot of trades with the Cult Master. But my time for using the Cult Master is gone. What to do? Or I can Cult Master double trade. That's actually not that bad. Specifically because I've had the read that my opponent, at least in their early hand, didn't have Frost Bolt. And actually, this is the only time I'm going to get the draws off this, so I have to do it. But also, because this will trade into the Hungry Dragon. And if my opponent wants to flame strike this, this is a relatively weak flame strike. That's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that I thought about that for a while rather than just immediately using the swipe. Especially considering how many cards my opponent still has in hand, I want to keep the swipe so that they can't flood the board. See, five mana dragon spread to remove this, I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with that. Oh, please, 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 please. <sighs> Had to be the Kazan. Oh, there it is! I've got it next turn. Do I kill that this turn, then? No, that just removes that. They can get two damage to my face. That's okay. Okay. 
I'll allow it. Let the pain speak to me. Okay. Oh shit. There's a lot of cards in my hand. It's also a very populated board that I can't really do that much about, unfortunately. Please get a fucking Oh, thank you. That's so mine. <laughs> kind of not okay. Uh, I'll just play the pilot and shred up because it won't die to a flame strike. Well, it will die to a flame strike, but I'll get something else as well. I wish I knew that was going to be duplicate because then I could play around it. Now I'm just going to have two fucking Gilvan Stalkers in hand and I'm going to burn the top card of my deck. God. Luckily, I've already got Ysera and both of my Iron Box. The only thing I'd be super sad to burn at this point would be my next Starfire. So I have to assume that they don't have a flame strike. Like, you'd play the flame strike. Right? Right? You'd play the flame strike. Uh -huh. No, that has to die, unfortunately. Okay, nullify, that's fine. That has to die. Do I trade across? If I play a big taunt, it doesn't matter. Unless, of course, my opponent polymorphs, in which case it really does matter. I want to I want to get the value, but at the same time, they can ping that and activate it. <sighs> Fucking hell. It's not that great. Okay, so if they're using a fireball plus one of their minions, I have to assume that they don't have a polymorph in hand. They even trade it down. Oh, cool. So now their fire blast can actually target minions. That's that's new and innovative. Shit, dog. Swipe to remove that? Yeah, I can't, I can't take the risk of 8 damage to the face, 10 damage, 13 damage to the face, and then I've got 9 health. Pyroblast in hand would kill me, but then they've also got a very short amount of time until they kill me with just nukes. What to do? So it'd be... Oh, easy, easy. Make it really difficult for them to use... Easy, quick removal, and also threaten the Steam Wheel Sniper two ways from Sunday. The standard phrasing is seven ways from Sunday, but I've only got two of them. I'm not that threatening. My hand is seven ways from Sunday in which they can get fucked. I'm so glad that it didn't just nuke one of my minions down. Because that's the kind of shit that would happen to me. Okay, so that's a pretty easy trade, and that just finishes that there. Of course. Well, I've just got to play the Iron Bark. Nope, Starfire's too slow. Iron Bark. Hero power for the health, and just attack face. Luckily, my 2-1 wasn't revealed, so they can't kill it. It still does pose a threat to the 3-2. So that means that if my opponent wants to get the 3 damage out of the 3-2, they're going to have to run in. I can't... Is that... Wow. Wow. A clockwork giant in the flesh. So I can kill that this turn with Starfire Hero Power. But the thing is, my Hero Power means that I need to take damage to it. I feel like my best way of dealing with it is actually flood my board. So... Micro... Micro Druid... And Frostwolf. 
Okay. Is that correct? Maybe I should just go with 334 for get the fucking Frostwolf for the moment. Yeah, okay. I'm going with this play because even if I hero power and attack that, I'm still going to die to Fireball. Right. Because the only removal I can do to that would have been the 2-1 plus Star Fire for 7 damage and then my hero power for the final damage. Your magic shall not save you. So I'd still be on six health. This just gives me a possible better way to kill the Clockwork Giant. Which actually did happen. Cool. Cool, cool. This... This is still more powerful. I have to trade this. Cool. Oh, it doesn't matter because both of them have to trade in order to kill both of the things on board. So... Haunted Creeper is a little bit of flame strike insurance. And then I attack base. I could have considered possibly using my hero power rather than summoning the Haunted Creeper so that Frostbolt doesn't kill me. Because currently Frostbolt Ping will kill me. Oh, nice. Kind of cold. It's not actually that bad. I actually might use Claw just for the health. I think that's actually outright correct. And rather than summoning Ysera, I just want to get as many minions on board. Because this already presents lethal. They ping the full one. I'm left with... One under lethal. Pyroblast and... Pyroblast and Fireball. Finish the game right now. Okay. No, I still can't end the game. Right, I need to deal 4 damage to this. The 4 damage that I deal to that is... What? Equal to the four damage I would get from using the druid of the chlorine charge form. Okay. I dream and the world now my board is as safe as it possibly can be against flame strike. Well played. God. Okay, that match wasn't that difficult, but it did get a little scary there near the end. All they needed to do was top deck the right card. So, Healing Touch still would have been wrong. How controversial is that opinion at this point, right? But Rhapsody, you could have healed yourself at so many of those different points there and you would have won. You would have done so much better. Yeah, but what if I didn't have a different card instead, right? Hindsight is 2020, but at the same time, I still think that in the majority of situations, Healing Touch is going to lose you more games than it wins you. I don't even remember what I took over Healing Touch, and I still think Healing Touch was wrong. Claw for early game removal. I kind of want to keep the Pilot to Shredder, but I need to have another two drop in hand before I can do that. I have to have a guaranteed two drop before I can bother keeping a four. Yeah, because I might get fucked. So I really want to coin the Micro Machine, but I don't have a follow up unless I'm planning on hero powering. Guess what? I currently have a follow-up. So my opponent, want, they're, they're uh, incentivized, unless of course they have a source of one damage in the hand, to use the Void Walker to hit this while it doesn't die. And then this is just a 1-1 one, one taunt. But then I hero power next turn and kill it. So unless they have the extra damage to kill this, and now it can't be a wolf, right? Can't be a die wolf alpha. Fuck! What? Why do you call? Go. 
God damn it. Okay, so our opponent's very obviously built a zoo deck. See, if we had a 3-2, it would be so good in that situation. We would have killed both of the, uh, Actually, it wouldn't have killed both of them. That would be good. Oh, Druid of the Flame is going to be actually really bad here. Yeah. Sorry, I was about to say, it's going to be really good here, but that's going to get buffed, of course. I am eagerly await- There's swipe. <laughs> that's actually the next word in my sentence. I am eagerly awaiting swipe. So, my hope is that my opponent generates a lot of very small minions this turn. Even if they fucking implosion this, right? Do I have to? Don't. I need those blood imps not to buff one another, otherwise my swipe will never affect. They both need to buff this. I'm so sad. Since I've been playing so slow, if my opponent just dropped like a say a sludge belcher right in the middle of all that they just dropped a sludge belcher it gets double buffed i've already lost the game at that point i'm actually that far behind um my opponent didn't demonstrate the ability to do one free damage and that was like on the first turn i'm gonna extrapolate from that that they possibly don't have in hand a mortal coil because I really need to do the instant damage and start going to face. I can't leave something on the board to constantly be buffed. I really want to hope that they keep tapping and have very low cost cards. And I keep removing them and just keep going face. Uh -huh. the crusade. Yeah, that's not that bad. I have to go face. The only way I'm going to win is, like, going supreme face right now. That doesn't make any sense. That makes a lot of sense. Not that good. <clears throat> So I remove this, this goes down to three, it kills this, and it survives as a three-two. Right. I don't want that to happen. I feel like I might have a better chance by going face than forcing my opponent to do that same trade, because they still have to run both of them in if they want to kill this, what? unless they have the one damage from hand. And since they've used the Bane of Doom, since they've used so many different things, I have to assume... And I have to make some assumptions here, because we are in kind of dire territories, that they aren't going to have that one damage from hand. I do have another Starfire in my deck, but I'm kind of just hoping that I play big guys until they lose now. Because they get to flood the board at this point. I don't get to stop them from doing that. Mm -hmm. Case in point. Parable warming, of course. Uh -huh. Well, I'm still going to take a lot of their minions to kill my Iron Bark. I'm considering Spider Tank Frostwolf. No, but then they just go face and win. But if I play Iron Bark, they attack, attack, then they go five damage to the face and they have whatever this summons. They tap, they play two cards. And I'm so far behind at that point that I lose. Oh, God. How did we get in this position? I'm going to give myself the op opportunity to possibly kill stuff. So they need to remove at least one of these or... Well, die if they want to tap this turn. Well, actually, they even die if they don't play a taunt this turn. 
So they're probably going to run the four three piloted shredder into this. I mean, now they're definitely going to do it. It's time. I just wonder if they'll also kill this. That's okay with me. Oh, they are. Interesting. So, I guess I have to play this and really hope that I get... Fuck. Four, 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 three. My opponent is literally one off lethal. If I play... I can force a tie if I play this. If I draw Dream, they don't draw any damage next turn. And then I attack face and Dream. My other option is I play the Iron Bark. My opponent just runs stuff into it and then continues to generate a board and we lose. Like, if I play the Iron Bark, I'm going to lose. 100% of the time. They attack in with this. If this misses, they'll attack in with that and that. And then they'll have a 4 and a 3. They'll have done 4 damage to my face, 3 damage to my face. I'll go down to fucking 9. And then they'll still have 2 minions on board. They'll tap, they'll have 2 cards. If they don't tap, if they do tap, I could top deck Starfire for the kill. If they don't tap, I lose. This is really difficult. I'm going to try and force the draw. My opponent needs to not have one damage in hand. At all. If they tap, they still can't draw one damage. For someone who's drafting a zoo deck. Like, this is the perfect anti-my current deck. All right. Cool. Not lethal yet. This deck is perfect against my deck, specifically because it plays so many things, so lost, low on curve, and I'm... I haven't lost. Nightmare actually kills my opponent if they leave this on the board. That's really interesting. So I need them to be afraid of tapping. That's interesting. If that hits... Me, yeah, that hit my face is actually 100% good for me. My opponent doesn't have lethal. I wonder if they're going to possibly tap and try and get it. They can't get any attack buffs at this point in order to give them that lethal. Well played. This was 100% the correct play. So I agonized for the entire turn over whether or not Ironbark Protector was better, but I ultimately decided I was going to lose the next turn if I did Ironbark Protector. And I am so glad that I spent that long agonizing on that decision. And I am 100% certain, by the way, that there are people out there who was looking, who were looking at that decision and went, no, you play the fucking Iron Bark. You need to thin out your opponent's board. And I'm not going to say that that was an outright incorrect decision. But I'm going to say that I think the reasoning I gave for playing Ysera was strong enough. Even though I didn't even think about Nightmare. Nightmare and Dream were both cards that... Sorry, not... Dream, sorry. Nightmare and Ysera's... Ysera Awakens. Nightmare actually gave me the kill. Ysera Awakens would have forced a draw. The light shall bring victory. I must protect the wild. Um... I have enough three drops that I kind of want to destroy my injured. There's no reason for me to keep two twos, so I'll at least mulligan one of them, because I'm not going second, so I'm not coining a two. I'll mulligan the other I have five good threes in my deck. So if my opponent doesn't coin, uh, coin a two on their second turn, then they're going to have a bad time against the Micro Machine. Whew. Unless, of course, they just smite. My greetings. Uh, greetings. Oh, actually, if they get River Croc, I'm happy. Or Micro Machine, but if they get anything else, I'm pretty sad. If they got Micro Machine, in fact, if they got River Croc or Micro Machine, they'd probably play it right now. Shadowwood Pain, interesting. You have to coin a one drop, right? Oh, there's another Micro Machine and it stomps all over you. Okay. Nice. So I was all set on playing the River Crocolisk, and that would have been fine. Because it kills this and survives. But this means my opponent has less of an ability to Velen's choose their minion and then just run it into mine. 
we do have to give some consideration to the fact that they did play that, knowing I could hero power it. So... Th th I've got to think about it like this. They knew I could hero power this. So either they wanted me to slow down, in which case it didn't affect me because I didn't have a tree drop anyway. Or... They thought that I wouldn't slow down, and if I didn't slow down, they get to Velen's Chosen this. So there's two completely different directions that they could take that. Or that I could interpret the what they're trying to do from that play. <laughs> oh, Arcane Nullifier actually might be a lot better right now. Yeah, Arcane Nullifier is so much better. Oh. Because then my opponent can't, you know, play a big minion and then just fucking sack their own Dark Cultist. I get to decide the speed at which that Dark Cultist dies, and currently I'm gonna die instead, shit. Powered Shield. They were able to play it and they targeted someone it's a Powered Shield. Um... If they can drag it out of their hand, that means that it's definitely playable on how much mana they have, so I knew it had to be a cheap spell. Uh, this is actually really bad. I think I just flood the board. Uh, no. Pilot to Shredder. No, but then that gets healed and attacks it, but it, I guess they do that with any minion. God. This is not good. We need something really fucking horrible and big to be summoned from this Death Lord. And it's going to be really difficult for us to get something from it, because when am I going to kill the Death Lord, right? It looks like I'm going to need at least two of these minions, excuse me, two of these minions to hit it and then a star file. However, if they hit one of these minions, heal it, and then hit there, oh no, then I can use the pilot shot. We'll have to see how it goes. I'm so glad they're slowing down in order to keep that alive, by the way. That's... Okay, so I do have my three biggest cards left in my deck. Get you, Sarah. Job's done. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah! Now that's going to get Shadow of Death, so I get to fish the Shadow of Death out of their hands. That's fun. It has to get Shadow of Death, right? There's no way it gets away with it. <sighs> if they have to sack minions into it, this will be amazing. But there's no chance. Oh, they had my Starfire. That's actually really interesting. Fuck. Mm. All the while. I still do have the uh, Keeper of the Grove in my deck, so I can silence that. I do have one silence for it. I guess, you know what? This is actually a huge play that I chose to make against my opponent possibly playing Master Spell, which is just such a good card. So if they play Master Spell, they're going to silence my Ancient Watcher and I'll get supreme value out of it. That's that's the play that I'm making here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I could trade down into that and use the Cult Master. That's not really that much value out of the Cult Master. And I have a Haunted Creeper in hand, so I may as well want to keep it. If this summons a 3-2 after my opponent attacks it, I'm going to be real salty. Embrace the void. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll kill it with Starfire, but it's pretty good. Nice. I can't summon Yezra yet. No. 
I'll save the 3-2. It'll give me more presence on board when I want to play the Cult Master and trade a bunch of stuff. And if my opponent didn't Holy Nova last turn, I have to assume they didn't have it. Because that was a really good Holy Nova turn. Oh, okay, so I can get two cards here. It's pretty good. I want to have pretty fierce control of the board before I play Yezera. And I wonder, like, if my opponent would have mind controlled that. Oh, wow. It's not good for me at all. Give me the silence. Oh, damn it. Of course, it's not the silence. Right. If my opponent wants to heal that and not deal with my board, they're welcome to, but that'll be bad for them. I can use my hero power to- Oh, fuck me. Don't. Of course. So they have plus one spell damage from the Velen's Chosen, and plus one spell damage from Ancient Mage, which of course I should have played around. <laughs> uh, Holy Nova managed to heal that up out of range of me killing it easily with Yezera, and also, I know it's pronounced Yezera, don't worry. Um, and also did damage to Yezera to actually put it in range of dying, so that's, that was really cool. My favorite part is how I totally could have played around that. I don't, do, I don't want to develop anything that my opponent will willingly hit and survive and then heal their minion from. Because that's where priests get their value, Spire, having a minion attention. survive after hitting. Ready, sir. You trade into the fight too, of course. Power word shield. Oh, wow, for the face. That might not even be wrong. In top deck mode, I should win. I still have a pretty big dude left in my deck. Okay. I can remove the entire board if I nightmare this and then run it in there. My other option is run hero, uh, but I want to hero power the ball, obviously. Okay. Goddamn five health. And then I'll leave this, because if my opponent wants to circle of healing, healing any of their own minions, they'll also heal my Injured Blade Master. So it runs there, and then I sack that. And then this gets developed as a fire cap because I need something that actually threatens my opponent's big drops if they have any next turn. Is someone injured? Oh wow! That's actually fine because then they heal this up, but it's gonna die on my turn. I mean, it has to die, unfortunately, so my opponent stops drawing cards. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Gave them the perfect draw. And luckily, I can kill that with my current board state, which I'm really happy about. I 
can save the 2 1 if I use this. Thinking retrospectively, I'm just really happy that the mind control tech didn't steal my 3 2. Okay. I've got six cards left, and I've got at least one really big card in there. Being my final... Ironbark. Okay, so that mana is... Okay. It's fine. Nice. Now we're having a good time. I should have maybe attacked that. Force my opponent to heal it next turn. I've got some stuff in there, but nothing amazing. If you want to fatigue, that's cool. Oh, actually, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, and it's left in my deck, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Luckily, I, I like that that tells me a little bit about what I la have left in my deck. A total of 15 damage this turn. I'm almost guaranteed lethal next turn, especially considering I have the Stranglethorn Tiger on board. My opponent has two taunts to get through. If I clear their board, I make it far more likely that I die to top deck Deathwing. Like, I'm not even kidding. That's actually what I'm thinking about right now. I win. God in heaven. This match should not have been as hard as it was. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> okay, we went into late game top deck. I had one card left in my deck. I think it might have been... No, it wasn't a claw, because I used a claw removal for a early game minion and a 3-3. What was the last card in my deck? Was it my other Starfire? No, I had a Star... No, I, I used both Starfires. Might have been my second pilot to Treader. I'm not entirely sorry. This is more what I was thinking the deck would do. Get to the late game and then just run over the opponent. Although it's not exactly a run over as much as it's a meander towards. Oh well. Can we just retroactively agree? Just think for a second and say that first game was bullshit. Okay, I have I have two two drops in hand. I can hold a fucking. Oh my god, I've got two twos and a three. So I've got a one, two, three, four. And all of them are pretty fucking powerful cards as well. This is actually really good. So I want to coin the Haunted Creeper turn one, just to give myself the flexibility of using my hero power to supplement an extra damage in order to kill a 3-2. At which point I'll have two 1-1s one on the field and my opponent on their third turn would have to ping one of them unless they want to possibly run into attack, attack, hero power, huge card value. So here we face Malagos. If they have Malagos in their deck, I'm going to go hang myself. So that's, that's cool. My goal here is to break absolutely every part of this, if at all possible. That's not... That's not destructible. 
Oh yes, just quickly consider all of the turns you all of the plays you can make on turn one. Sorry. My thanks to you. I am very thankful that they said sorry. Well, greetings. Oh, greet him back. My greetings. Yeah. He seems like a relatively nice and well-mannered person. I'm enjoying their company so far. That's fine. Do I want to try and slow them down by playing a Loot Hoarder, or would they just run that- But if they run that in, I'll just return with this. I think the Loot Hoarder will actually slow them down. Because if they want to ping the Loot Hoarder, they've already told me they don't have one drop because they didn't play anything on turn one, despite considering the turn for a while. And I'm not actually outright losing in card value. I do get my card back. They're highlighting a card, but they're not using it. I wonder if they attack here and then maybe Arcane Missiles to try and remove both one once. Anyway, I developed Spider Tank because it actually threatens this. Also, if my opponent wants to use Flame Cannon, they've got a 50-50. And 50% 50 of the time, it's actually horrible. Frostbolt's fine. It's still not great because my opponent is slowing down severely. Now they're trying to slow me down. Interesting. But that's actually fine with me. I don't need to play my Pilot of Shredder this turn because the Micro Machine is going to go out of control on a naked board. And if my opponent has a ping next turn, they're only going to be able to generate a 3-drop, which means that I'll be able to kill whatever they summon with the Micro Machine plus Hero Power at worst. And I've got a powerful 3-drop to supplement that on my turn 5. Oh, that's actually the worst case scenario. Do I silence it? No. No, it can't be right to silence it. Because it just summons a 2-1 as its death rattle. I, I can kill the 2-1 with my fucking shapeshift. Plus, it looks like I'm playing a 4-drop next turn anyway, so... Unless my opponent suddenly drops... You know, something I want to kill with Starfire. Like a Sludge Belcher. I must safeguard the land. So if my opponent if my opponent goes for the cheap removal here, I've got claw hero power in order to remove this really easily on the backswing. Uh, if they go for trying to remove this, obviously they already know my hero power is gonna hit it on the backswing. This arena is a good example of when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I really like that, actually. They're not going to waste a flame strike on this board, would they? Not when I can hero power to remove in response. Not at all. Maybe if it left them with a guaranteed board, but they're not going to have a board after this. For the Lich King! That's really bad. Yeah, that's really bad. If my opponent wants to play a Cone of Cold next turn, that's not that bad for me. So having the stealth minion in the center isn't super valuable. Oh cool, I got one of those as well. Unfortunately, I can't target you. Minion. Summon something I can kill with Starfire, please. Yeah, I can kill that with Starfire. No, I can't. Yeah, fuck. Okay. For the 
I really want to generate this as a 5-2, but it's far too likely my opponent has, you know, Frost Bolt, random source of one damage plus a ping, Flame Strike, even. Flame Strike, and then they have to ping this, which means... Oh, great. That's, yeah, really good for them. Starfire Hero Car has to be next turn, right? <laughs> I could use that. I want to play Ironbark so fucking bad. But if my opponent polymorphs it, I lose. I also want to play Ysera, but again, same thing. I have to deal with it. I could have gone for my opponent's face for 10 damage right then. Uh, Wolf Rider runs for face plus stuff, I hit face. Let the pain oh shit, please! Oh man, if you want to fucking draw cards, that's fine by me. There's nothing you can play right now that I can't kill with a wolf. Well, I guess it doesn't matter at this point. Moment of truth. Do they have Polymorph? If they, if they played a minion that didn't have Death Rattle summon another minion, I probably just would have used the Wolf Rider to remove it. Summon the Arcane Nullifier, which is going to be a 4-5 taunt. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're going to have to kill on the other one as well. That's really annoying. Yeah, that's really annoying. Well, it was really difficult for them to remove that. So I think now I just have to play Ysera and hope that I get enough cards to open the game. Dream is fine. Send something back to hand. That could actually be really good. That gets me six damage out of my Wolf Rider, right? Play Wolf Rider, dream it back to hand. Well, play Wolf Rider attack, dream it back to hand. Great. So I'm six off lethal for next turn. I'm almost certainly dead. If I send this back to hand, I buff my opponent, but it's not even a huge board presence right now. It does cost them a whole turn to play again, though. So I want to make that attack because it's really difficult for my opponent to remove this right now. Because they can't ping it. Even after Flame Strike, they have to attack it. Okay. Were you expecting to damage my Yezera? Again, I'm aware it's Ysera. Okay, I lose. Oh well. God damn it. <clears throat> yep. That first match kind of set the pace for the rest of the arena. What do we get? Four wins after all of that? Yeah, four. You know, I'm still in some twisted way proud of this arena because I feel like my reasoning was a lot stronger than in most previous episodes. 
And I get 70 gold for it. That was nice. Oh, nice. And I even got a pack with two rares, which is just in two vitality totems so that I can heal my hero and stop myself from fucking dying. I even got an arcane, sorry, an antique heal bot just to rub it in. God. Get myself some 55 dust. I'm okay with that. That's a lot more than 40. Literally 15 more than 40. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game... <sighs> the name of the game has been Hearthstone Arena. The name of the deck has probably been... I'm, I'm gonna say Accountant, because so many times we were counting so many turns into the future. We were counting all of the possible forms of damage that our opponent would have had. And we were either one off or just in range for them to kill us. We just... A little bit frustrating, but that's the side of variance that you sometimes have to see. Sometimes you just top deck lethal, sometimes your opponent top decks the only stealth minion in their deck, followed by the only buff that would have won them the game. My name has been Rhapsody, hopefully you've been enjoying yourself. If you have, please click like, it does help me get my content out to new people. There's also a playlist in the description down below, the, where you can find more arena, you can find more ranks, you can find adventures, you can find tavern brawl. You can find all all of your Hearthstone hearts delight down in the description. Below that is the comment section where you can tell me that I should have played around that blessing of might. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself and we'll see you next time.